Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make these large paper beads. I'm going to demonstrate how I cut them, roll them and seal them, and also how I like to use them. I will be using old calendar pages, but of course you can use magazines, book pages, scrapbook paper or offcuts and leftovers of scrapbook paper, music sheets, and of course any paper you can get your hands on. You can make large beads, you can make small beads, medium beads, all different kinds of beads. Chances are you made paper beads before, but you still might learn something new. And like I said, I will also be making a project with these, so stick around and let's get started. I have my colorful calendar pages ready here. Of course, you can use magazines and such, but I'll show you in a moment why it's easier to work with calendar pages. I have my little rolling tool, just a wooden skewer. I'm going to use this to roll the beads. I'll tell you about this in a moment. Chances are you don't have it, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. And I also have an array of cheap glitter nail polishes and some glitter paint. I think glitter kind of makes them look a little bit more interesting once they're done. And I'm going to start off and I'm going to choose this one here. It's the most colorful one. All of them will work, but I'm going to start with this one here. And now we need to cut our page in order to roll the beads. And this is why using a calendar page works perfect. Well, you'll see why in a moment. And don't even ask me why I still have a 2017 calendar, but I do. The reason why it's easier to work with calendar pages is because it's already got lines. So you know that when you make your cuts, you will get a perfectly symmetrical triangle, which is what we want. We want a long triangle. So I'm going to align my ruler over here. I know it's a little bit difficult to see. It's going to go into a point here. So I'm just going to pop it next to that line and then down here. You'll be able to see in a moment. I'm just going to cut that. And now I'm going to do the other side. So I'm popping my ruler again in that point here, meeting it down at this line over here. And there is my perfect symmetrical on both sides, exactly the same on both sides, a little triangle piece that I'm going to use for my beads. And I might as well do the rest. So you can see how easy it is after you make that first cut. Because I guess rolling is the easy part. Well, for me anyway, it's the cutting that takes the longest amount of time. And here we go. So now you need a little wooden skewer or a toothpick. So a toothpick will work, but I wanted to show you this. Uh, most likely you don't have it. It's quite dirty because I've used it quite a bit. This is actually a bead roller. I don't know if you know about this. I don't know if you've seen it before. I found one years ago on Etsy. I'm talking seven years ago or something. I don't know if they sell them still, but it's a, it's a bead roller. And basically, you pop your paper in between these two pieces. You roll your bead. I'm, I'm just going to do it real quick. Look how quick that is. I mean, it's quick with, with the other skewer as well, which is what I'm actually going to use. I'm just demonstrating here. And then once your bead is rolled and glued, you just remove this, you remove this, and you have your bead. But in case if you don't have one of these little gadgets, we're just using a skewer. I mean, chances are you've already done this anyway because uh, people have been doing this for years so you probably already know what you're doing but in case if you don't i'm just gonna do that first little roll just around the skewer as tight as i possibly can and then i'm gonna go in and apply a little bit of glue just randomly and i'm just gonna do the whole thing sometimes i add glue here at the very end but doesn't matter i'm just gonna pop glue all over and then roll my bead and I'm trying to get it really really tight which is why it's making this funny sound and now I'm just rolling that bead roll 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 all the way to the end try and keep it centered if it's not centered if it's like over here you can always move it back to the center because that glue hasn't dried yet and there we go and there's my bead very easy and now I'm just going to take it off sometimes it might be a little bit difficult to take off if you rolled it too tight and this is where one of these gadgets comes in handy because you can just kind of pull the pieces out but it can still be done I'm just going to push it off and here we go there's my little bead cute little bead all right pop that to the side 
I'm gonna do a few more start rolling that on just like that and then add my glue roll it all the way I guess the most important thing is that you have glue at the end you probably don't even need to have glue on the whole strip but I like to just in case I like to make sure that nothing's going to be unraveling so here we go push that off perfect little bead there we go and like I said rolling them is the easy part I guess you can do it in front of the TV it's the cutting that takes the most amount of time for me anyway because I like to have symmetrical I like to make sure that this rolled bit is right there in the middle and that's quite easy to do when you have a symmetrical triangle let me show you what happens if it's not symmetrical I'm going to use this it's kind of not symmetrical so it's still going to look okay it's going to work but you might have to move it around a bit more to get that perfect you know and this one didn't kind of it didn't finish in a point but that's still okay it still works it might not be as perfect as the other ones I don't know if you can see it's still kind of okay so the way that I used to make these beads without using the calendar pages but just magazine pages is I would mark I would make little markings on the page for example like this and at the top as well and I would use those lines to align everything and then cut so it can still be done but I just thought using the calendar pages and the lines that are already there I thought it's perfect if I wanted to make a shorter bead, I would still use, say, for example, the lines here, but then I would find the middle up here, find the middle somewhere there, and then use that middle and then align down the bottom here. I'll turn it this way so you can see. And then that point up there, align over here. There's my little triangle. I'm going to use my little gadget here. So this is going to give me a shorter bead pop that in between there and then start rolling and here we go once it's rolled you just kind of pull that end out and easily pull your bead out and there it is and this bead is a little bit shorter well it's half the size of this one because I used half the markings right there we go it's really straightforward isn't it really easy and really fun you do get a little bit of glue on your hands which annoys me to no end I must admit but you get a whole lot of beads in only a few minutes right once they cut down you just start rolling and you can end up with a whole heap of beads in a very short amount of time and I just wanted to show you these are some of the ones that I've previously made I have all different sizes I've used a lot of my beads that I've made in the past I have tiny tiny little ones like this and then of course you know I have if you're using a thicker paper you get really thicker chunkier beads like this you know this sort of stuff and also you can work with straight strips of paper and then you get a bead that looks like this and what I mean is you wouldn't be cutting your paper into a triangle but you would rather have just a long piece of strip of paper like this a rectangle and then you roll it up the exact same way and you end up with beads that look like this the only thing I don't like is having that really obvious seam there but you know they still look quite nice and all of these were made with leftover strips of scrapbook paper another thing you can do I'm just seeing it here now look at this one it looks like a pencil kind of look at it it looks like a little crayon doesn't it like a used up crayon and the way that you get this look is you instead of having triangle or a rectangle you have a triangle but not a symmetrical one now I can't think of what that type of triangle is called you have one straight side and then one slanted side and then when you're rolling let's do one you start your rolling the exact same way you do everything the same but you try and keep the straight side aligned here so when you're rolling you want to keep it aligned here wait a minute that gives you a completely different look that looks like a cone looks completely different to this I made these so many years ago now I forgot how I made them but the point is you can play around with your strips and how they look to get all sorts of different kinds of effects this one here is just straight on the top and on the bottom 
flat I should say this one here has a little bit of something on the top and bottom and then it's just flat but I think my favorite ones are just these ones that I've just shown you how to do with a simple triangle that you just roll up and you end up with that bead that's a little bit thicker in the middle and thinnest at the ends. Uh, this is my favorite. Anyway, once I roll up my beads, then I like to decorate them. And like I said before, I like to use glitter. And this is my little working station. You can see I've already done some. This is just some type of a foam that I stuck a whole lot of toothpicks into. And this is like a drying station, I guess you can say. So basically, I, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but let me show you why not. I take a bead and I paint it with nail polish. And if you're going to do a whole lot of these beads, it's probably best to take it outside and not do it in your house. I kind of employ whatever tool I can get. I mean, you can see how old this is. It's already rusty, but sometimes it's easier to kind of maneuver the bead and get paint all over it when you're not holding the top and the bottom of the actual bead. So I'm using this paper clip and here we go. And then now, this obviously has to dry, so I just pop it onto a toothpick and onto its little drying place it goes. And there it is. So they're all drying there. In case if you're wondering, this doesn't yellow with age, it doesn't chip, it doesn't change at all. I can tell you now with absolute certainty it's been about probably about eight years or so if I'm remembering correctly when I did these ones with the glitter nail polish look how beautiful they look and the glitter nail polish doesn't yellow you know it doesn't chip it doesn't go anywhere it's just perfect the way it is you can see I have a box this one says sealed which means I've sealed all the beads and this is my other box with the beads that I made that I haven't sealed yet you can see they're just raw, they don't have any shine on them, they don't have any glitter on them, and I just really prefer the look of that glitter. Oh, look at this one. It's been so long since I've made these that I really don't re even remember how I made them. I think I know how I made this one. So I can see that it has two points, which means instead of having one point, I think I need two points. So let me try. I cut it down so you can see a little bit better. So instead of having the one point, I'm going to mark a middle of this box and the middle of this box. I'm going to have two points and maybe I will do this. That can also be a little bead. And now I'm going to go from this point, I don't know, I'm just uh, playing around. I just made a random point there and I'm going to cut to that point just in there and I'm going to do the same thing from here and that's what I've got and I'm going to roll it now and see what happens. I might roll just one side over here and then come back to that other one. There's one little side. I think these types of beads will be more effective with thicker paper and also with perhaps a book page or something like that because then it's going to be a lot more obvious that it's a bit of a different type of a bead and there we go that's what that looks like it kind of goes wide and then narrow and then wide again so you can most definitely play around with that you can bring that you know how I cut spikes up here and then they met here maybe they need to meet lower to get uh, a thinner middle here anyway you can have a play I'm gonna try and see what happens if I paint it with this gold glitter paint. I mean, of course I know what's gonna happen. It's just gonna have gold glitter on it. I just wanna see what will happen if I add actual glitter, like sprinkle more, because I wanna have more glitter on this bead. Personally, I'm not a fan of glitter, but I suppose it's better if it's uh, stuck on a bead than if it's loose in a jar, right? Mm, that looks pretty cool. So there's quite a lot more glitter than uh, with just that glitter gold paint that I use. Maybe I can like dip my brush in the glitter and then do that. Look at that, a little boho bead. I love how that looks. Absolutely love all that glitter on that bead. So of course that's going to have to dry and I'm hoping that once it's dry that glitter is not going to be flaking off. So I'm going to show you once it's dry how it actually looks but for now it can go onto its little drying place 
and also of course the different colors of nail polish or glitter or whatever that you have glitter paint the different types of effects you'll have and you'll probably be liking some more than others so what i was thinking of doing is i'm just going to finish painting all of these i'm going to do it probably all off camera and then when it's dry probably tomorrow i might leave it overnight I'm going to come back and I have no idea what I'm going to do, but I was thinking maybe I can do something with the beads. I wasn't even planning to do this video, as you can see. I don't know, if you've seen my previous video, you know that I have been sick. I'm only starting to feel better now. And today I unexpectedly have an empty house. Might as well go in with some glitter. Why not? And I have 10 day old nail polish on my fingernails. I'm hoping that you didn't notice and i thought well i wanted to do this video people ask often when they see me use my beads like i said i have used these beads before and people ask me how do you make the beads and it's such an old thing people were making these 10 years ago even more but anyway i haven't done a video on it so i thought well today's the day isn't it and look at that it looks beautiful I also have this glitter nail polish that I bought by accident. It's got really large flecks of glitter in it and I'm never going to use it on my nails. So I thought maybe if I do it on these, it's going to look, maybe it was meant to be. There we go. It looks really cool. And I'm really not stingy with the nail polish either. Like I apply quite a bit of a coat on there, especially with these glitter ones, because sometimes the glitter doesn't stick. So I just kind of really go on there. As the nail polish dries, it kind of shrinks as well, so it's not going to be that thick. Maybe I can sprinkle it with some of this clear glue. I mean, what am I talking about? Glitter that I have. Just sprinkle it on top while it's still wet, and it's kind of going to dry together with the nail polish. Uh, that's what I'm hoping. I mean, I don't know. I won't know until tomorrow. But look, that looks so beautiful. I can even do this. Ha! Huh, would you look at that? that looks really cool look at that oh i love how that looks i'm so glad that i've got this glitter now another good thing is i guess if you've got nail polish like i like to use glitter nail polish on my nails because it makes my nail polish last longer and this one's on its way out it's completely gluggy but i kept it because it's perfect to use in this project because it doesn't matter how gluggy it is it's not on your hands it's going to dry eventually okay that's how that one looks just get it on there this one's gonna dry real quick i wonder if i want more glitter why not let's get it on there maybe i can mix it a little bit with some gold as well have a bit of gold have a bit of silver have a bit of this and have a bit of that why not i'm not gonna use this glitter for anything else i'm stuck with it until i use it up so might as well when I see these flax that are standing up, I suspect they're going to come off. So I can just kind of do this. There we go. Let it all dry. And I will come back tomorrow. I'm going to make some more in the meantime. And maybe we can make something. I'm not sure what we can make. I'm going to think of something between now and tomorrow. And we will make a little something. Something fun. I'm not sure. We'll see. All right. I'll be back when these are dry. All right. So my beads are all dry. And I actually made a few more. To be honest, they were dry within half an hour, but it's now two days later, nails freshly done, and I'm ready to make some projects. So before I start playing with my new beads, I just wanted to show you these journals that I made. I have a tutorial making these journals. I will link it down below. And I used my paper beads in this binding, this half spine binding. And this is actually the video where a lot of people were asking me how to make the paper beads. So here I am. This is a really, really beautiful and fun look. And it adds to that handmade feel. And here's the third one that I did in the tutorial where I used buttons instead of the beads. So anyway, that will be linked down below if you wanted to go and check it out. It really is a whole lot of fun. Today, I want to use my large beads to make a tassel for this journal that's in its beginning stages. It hasn't even been put into signatures yet or bound or anything like that. So I might get that tassel in there before I bind my signature in. And I'm going to use my large paper beads and all sorts of other stuff that I picked out. That goes with this journal. I have some ribbon. I have some lace. I have some beautiful eyelash trim. People always ask me where I get this eyelash trim from. And I get it from thrift stores or up shops, wherever I see it. And then also another piece of something. 
I picked out some other little bits and pieces that I'm going to use and for the tassel I'm going to use this I'm not sure what it's called but this actually came off of uh, an old handbag and the first thing I'm going to do is get this through here making tassels is so easy and fun and quick and it adds such beauty to a journal it's like a little extra that adds quite a bit of value to any journal okay so I've just popped that through here and now somewhere there in the middle this is way too long anyway so I'm going to be chopping bits off down the bottom now I'm going to use a piece of something else a little pretty twine and just wrap it around here up the top tie a knot there we go, just there, tie a knot, maybe a double knot, well definitely a double knot. Here we go, now I'm going to go to this side and tie another knot, another double knot, just to be sure. And there we go, I could, I was planning to trim this off, but I could leave it I guess, I can decide later. And I'm going to show you a really fun thing about these paper beads that I love. And that's the fact that they usually generally have quite a large opening, meaning that they can go onto things like this lace, for example. So what I do is I get a large eyed needle, if that's the correct terminology I'm using. I get that lace through my needle just like that. I'm going to use some other beads first. I'm going to pop a little uh, gold bead on there. And then look how easy that goes on. I needed a longer needle. All right, here's a longer needle. And check this out. Just goes on there beautifully. Look at that. Absolute beautiful look. And now I'm going to pop this one on there. And I'm just going to leave it on there like this for now. I'm not going to be tying any knots just yet. I'm going to go to this other little piece of lace I've got and I'm thinking that I might add some of my shorter beads like this I'm trying not to overthink it just adding some beads on there I might grab this one next I'm going to do another one of my long beads something like that I think it's nice to have a mixture of your paper beads and then some other beads some little gold and bronze beads or you know whatever color you've got I've got some darker beads here but anyway the point is I'm mixing the handmade beads with you know other types of beads and now I'm gonna pop something onto this lace and then on this one I did something like this a little mixture of long bead short little bead and then you know some other stuff and now I'm going to look at my tassel and I do think that these beads do kind of get lost in this eyelash trim. However, if I was to remove the eyelash trim altogether, I really don't think it looks as rich as I want it to look on a journal. So I'm going to keep that eyelash trim on there and now here's my journal, here's my tassel. They look beautiful together and I just need to sort of cut this to where I want it. So I'm just going to kind of maneuver these beads up or down just so they're not all in the same line and now of course I need to tie knots at the end here so my beads are not able to slide off I have a video on making tassels and ways of attaching tassels to your junk journals I'm going to link that down below if you wanted to have a look at that video after this one and now I just need to trim it down because it's way too long I might just pop this up here just for now holding it in place and here we go look at this beautiful handiwork here this is all my mum's beautiful handiwork on this journal cover and then I think these little beads they go perfectly well together I love the glitter of course I think it adds all that much more beauty to that paper bead and there we have it a little tassel I was thinking of poking a hole here in order to attach this but it seems like I don't need to it seems like it's actually working it's not going to come off if I just clip it on there like that so that's a bonus tassel done I wanted to make another little something and I have this box labeled charms and tassels and I put all of my broken jewelry and pieces in here so you know I have things like this from broken necklaces and old necklaces and stuff and oftentimes I would find bags of broken jewelry in op shops here is something that used to be earrings and I think they look oh so beautiful with my paper beads they just go so perfect together so i'm going to use this and i'm just going to pick out some other bits and pieces here is a chain i can use this chain of course which is why i've got it in here it's just easy to come in 
here is a bracelet see i can make something with this a little heart locket beautiful some earrings i like to take these little bits off and you know put it on paper clips and danglies and all sorts of stuff what else do i have oh look at this this was an earring oh this would look beautiful get that out i'm just getting a few pieces out and i'm gonna have a little play a few other stuff and then i have these long pins i forgot what they're called and you can see they're all bent and you know i barely ever buy stuff that's new so you know some of my stuff might be bent out of shape like this but that's okay because we can still use it if you don't have any of these pins for this project that i'm going to make next you can use wire or string i mean you can really do so many different things i'm just gonna have a little play and i'm starting off with this as my top piece this little claw whatever it's called and i'm going to start dismantling this chain i could use this as well and i'm just gonna open it somewhere here i really love going to op shops and finding bags of broken jewelry and then you have an array of all these different pieces that you can make something beautiful out of get that off i'm going to use that for something else i'm going to pop this one on here we go that's a little something and now i'm thinking of using my large beads see even though this is bent i believe it's still gonna work perfect but i need something down here because it just kind of goes straight through so i'm going to use one of these smaller beads these gold little beads pop that on like that i don't know if i can fit one at the top but yep that fits and then make a little loop up here pop it through my chain somewhere wherever all right and that's on there and now i'll just continue adding more and more until i'm satisfied with how it looks that's how i'm going so far now i think i might add these they're very fancy very sparkly this is what i've got so far and i'm just gonna keep adding until i'm happy with the final look here is how I'm going so far. I'm just adding bits and pieces onto this chain. I'm making a little charm. Well, uh, quite a large charm actually. But just adding things. They don't even necessarily go all that well together. Like these two kind of seem to stand out. But, you know, I, I actually like it. I do. I, I quite like it. And I'm just wondering if I need to keep adding more stuff. I think if you see it without all the clutter it makes a difference so here we go i'm pretty happy with how this is looking a little keychain charm whatever you want to call it it'll be a beautiful little gift for someone look at that now that the light has changed and here's another journal that i'm making it's got this bronze gold kind of look and i thought perhaps something like that on a journal cover i mean it's the same as a uh, same idea as before but just a little bit of a different look here we go i think it looks uh, gorgeous really and you add it to a journal spine only because it's quite large so it actually works i think it looks beautiful you can even sew them onto the cover perhaps have some little gold beads in between something like that perhaps why not you could also have them on the closure here i wouldn't want to use it on this ribbon but these are some covers that i'm currently making so they're in progress and this is gonna be like something in there anyway so they have lace closure so let's see how how it look this lace might be too wide to go through the bead but we shall soon find out yeah i don't think that's gonna work it's quite this lace is quite stiff so i don't think it's actually going to but anyway let's see all right that didn't work this lace is quite thick quite stiff so let's try something else all right let's try this this is a finished journal i just have to list it in my shop and perhaps what i was thinking i wouldn't add it to this journal because of this yellow it doesn't really go but because it's a smaller journal i'm gonna go with smaller beads but on a larger journal i think it would look quite nice anyway let's do let's do both just to demonstrate you would be tying a knot at the end and i think this looks really quite nice at the end of your closure and then you would just tie a little bow and you have these little bits as part of the closure if i was to use this i would leave obviously longer 
pieces of ribbon or whatever I'm using so that I have enough to tie a bow and you know but anyway it's just an idea but I also wanted to make more stuff with my little bits and pieces here so perhaps I want to do something a little smaller this time let's see I most definitely want to use these earrings because I think they go so well with the beads okay and then there's this one I'm leaving this one really really simple just adding the two large beads and that earring piece it looks really nice I'm quite happy with that and here's another one also really simple just two beads and that's the first part of that bracelet I've shown you before once you start making them it's really hard to stop and here is the other part of that bracelet so this part was attached to this part here like that I've shown you before and I have just detached them and made another little thing just like that really simple just one bead basically attaching stuff to stuff I want to see if I can make something with this earring as well and here we go earring attached onto a little bit of that chain and since it's a video about paper beads I might go ahead and add some paper beads I don't know something like that perhaps I can add some more bits and here we go okay I think I've had quite enough even though I really wanted to use this locket as well but you've seen that box of stuff that I have I mean this could go on forever I'll show you a little bit closer look how beautiful they look I think they look just so gorgeous and this is gonna really look great on any project so I hope that you are inspired to make paper beads all over again I know I used to make them quite a bit and then I kind of stopped and moved on to other things and I made all of those things and I still have all of these beads left from only this session plus the ones that I've made in the past it seems like this is one of those projects that we tend to make and then leave it for a few years come back to it because this is never gonna go out of style this is always going to be beautiful because they are beautiful and special I think first time I heard of paper beads and I actually purchased a necklace and I was blown away by the fact that the beads are made of paper so I don't think this is going anywhere even though part of me feels like who's making paper beads anymore but I'm still making them and I will be for many many years to come and I hope you will be too so let me know are you inspired have you made paper beads before has this rekindled the spark the muse for making paper beads and little projects with the paper beads let me know in the comments down below thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye